today we're going to take a look at the ultimate persistent USB. I just built this, hence the custom Christmas theme I have here on the grub loader. This guy has got 10 operating systems. All of them come pre-built with persistence, which means they're portable operating systems. Take them wherever you go. Uh, you can save all your work within those operating systems. So next time you boot it wherever you go, all your data is right there. All your settings are saved. So this is a really special USB, guys. I'm going to show you how to make one. I'm going to show you step by step how to get it running with the different themes. By the way, this has 10 themes. The default is the holiday persistence that I created myself. And then I've got nine other themes. Very easy to switch between the themes. I'm going to show you how to set up those themes. I'm going to show you how to get the ISOs on there. And I'm going to show you how to get persistence configured. And we're even going to take a look at some advanced functions such as creating our own persistent DAT files and expanding to make a larger persistence file if you need to expand later on if you're running out of space. Guys, this USB is available on my shop, bootableusbs.com. And if you use the code ITUNICORN2024, you're going to save 20% on this new item. That's only for a limited time, guys. So get over there to www.bootableusbs.com and pick one up today. All right, if you're interested in learning how to build one of these on your own, stick around, guys. We're going to jump right in, and I'm going to show you how to do it step by step. All right, guys, first thing you need to do is download Ventoy. So I have a link for you in the description. Let's go ahead and download. If you're on Windows, download the Windows Zip. It'll take you over to SourceForge. Go ahead and click the green button. And once this downloads, you're going to want to extract it. All right, so let's go ahead and get that extracted. Go ahead and open up the folder. Once it's extracted, what I like to do is I like to put a shortcut on the desktop for the Ventoy to disk. It's optional. So I'll go to Show More Options, and I'll say Send To. Desktop Create Shortcut. Now we have a shortcut right on our desktop. So next thing you need to do, guys, is get a USB drive. Uh, make sure it's blank. If not, make sure you don't have anything on there that you need. Back it up, in other words, because the next step will format it. So go ahead and launch the Ventoy to disk. That'll open this little interface here. And then plug in your USB drive, and then you'll refresh once you've done that. All right, once you plug in your USB, let's do a refresh. Mine is H, 128 gig flash drive. Click install. Yes, yes. This is formatting and installing Ventoy onto your disk. All right, we're all set there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a few directories in there. So let's go ahead and launch File Explorer. Head over to your USB drive, whatever letter that was. And we're going to create a few folders here. First one is Ventoy. Next one is ISO. Next one is Persistence. And the last one's going to be Themes. So this is where we will store all of our themes. This is where we'll store all of our persistent DAV files. This is where all the ISOs will go. And then this is where the Ventoy configuration happens. All right, so what you're going to want to do next, guys, is find some of your uh, favorite ISOs. In this case, we're looking for persistence. So if we go over to the Ventoy persistent page, it'll let us know which OSs work with persistence. So we see here Arc Linux also supports ArcMan, ArcBang, ArcLabs, BlackArc. Uh, and then we have Ubuntu, MX, so any of these should work, guys. I've already downloaded a few, so we won't have to sit here and wait. So I will just do a couple for this demonstration. And then if you follow that rinse and repeat for every ISO that you're looking to have persistence on, you'll have something close to my finished product, which we'll take a look at as well. All right, guys, for this demonstration, let's do Kali Linux, and we will do Linux Mint. So Kali's here. Let's pop that over to our USB drive. 
We're going to put it in the ISO folder. And then we'll find Linux Mint. I think that's in our downloads. Yep. And we will pop that also into our ISO folder on the flash drive. All right. Let those copy, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, while those are recording, we're going to jump over to the Ventoid Persistence page again. I have a link for you in the description for this. And we're going to go ahead and grab the pre-built uh, Ventoid DAT files or persistence files. So here are the pre-created image files. We can click on this link. And you're going to want to download these files. So you're going to scroll down to the images.zip. And we'll download that done this a few times but wanted to walk through it again for the demo obviously so go ahead and extract your image.zip file and it really zips it up nicely because there's a lot of data in here once it's extracted okay so now we have images four images and here are all the different zipped up persistent files now what I do guys is I only use the ext4 and I only use the 4 gig uh, you can obviously use whichever flavor, whichever size. With the EXT4, you have more flexibility of expanding and decreasing the size of the DAT file later on. So I just go ahead and delete the rest of them. I'm not going to use them. Uh, obviously, if you want different sizes, different formats, have at it. All right, so now I will just extract each one of these. Sorry, got it on the other screen there. And we can rinse and repeat. Now we'll just let those finish. And once those are done, we can delete these zip files. We don't need those. We just need the contents of the unzipped files. So inside each one of these will be the actual DAT file. So next thing we need to do, guys, is we need to head over and since today we're doing, in this demo, Kali Linux and Linux Mint, we need to take a look at the persistence page again to see which ones we're going to need for that. So if you scroll up here, this is like a map. So if you're using Linux Mint, you're going to use the Casper RW, and if you're using Kali, you're going to use the persistence file. This one we may have an issue with, guys, and, and if we run into that issue during this demo, I'm going to show you how to create your own using a shell file. And uh, I've been able to overcome any issues with persistence in Kali, but this is kind of a known issue with Kali, especially on the newer releases. Um, but it's not a problem because I'm going to show you a, I think it's a one-liner, and we'll get you up and going with a new persistence file. It's also good to know those commands because you're going to use similar commands in shell scripts when you want to expand and I'll show you a quick demo on that as well when you want to expand the persistence DAT file so you have a larger uh, working space or a larger persistence file so you can save more stuff if you start running out of space on one of these portable OS's with persistence. All right, so now that we know we need the Casper RW for Linux Mint, what I like to do is, is create a copy of these if you're going to be working with them because you really want each one of these on your USB drive to have their own. So let's find the Casper. And I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to go back, I'm going to paste it here, sorry we don't want to paste there, we want to paste this, we want to paste this on the USB drive, so let's go back here, we'll go to H, and we'll go to persistence, and we will paste it here. And once that's done, we're going to rename that to Linux Mint, something along those lines, so we know that we're going to use that one for Linux Mint. All right, so now let's, uh, while that's copying, let's go ahead and do the same thing for Kali. So we're going to find that persistence file, downloads. I don't know why I'm not using my tabs in here. It makes it easier. Matter of fact, let's do that two tabs because we have Windows 11 why not all right now we don't have to go back and forth okay let's find where we put that 
images four, images. All right, now we're looking for the persistence. Here it is. So same, same thing, guys. I'm going to copy this one, put it in the persistence folder of the USB. And then once that's done, I'm going to rename it to something like Kali. And I'll keep the originals here so I can rinse and repeat as needed to construct this complete USB. So I'll go back to my Ventoy tab, hop on to the persistence folder, and I'll paste this guy. All right, these are going to take a little bit to copy, guys. So we'll come back once that's done, and then we'll... Uh, We'll move on. Actually, we can do some other stuff while we wait for this. Another thing I want to show you guys is how to create your own themes. So we can do that pretty easily here by going into, going back to the Ventoy. And then, actually, if you just search for it, I think it's easier. Ventoy themes. And then you'll see this link here, Grub Themes. And you can download any of these different themes and have those run on here. So I did quite a few of the uh, dead sec, and then I also did my own custom, but let me show you what I mean here. So if you sort by rating, you'll get some of the higher rating ones first, well, the highest rating ones first. So we can grab, let's just grab a random dead sec. Mm, I haven't seen this one brainwash. Let's try it. Okay, go ahead and download that. Open that up. You're going to want to extract it. And then open that extracted folder up. And this is what the background will look like when we boot. So kind of cool. But you have to link, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now, or after all this stuff copies, you have to link the uh, themes.txt file. So you get, need to find out where that is. Let's see. Oh, there it is. So when we go in the plug sign configurator, we'll need to link this. And I'll show you guys what I mean here in a minute. All right, so go ahead and take that and copy it. Control C. And then we'll pop that back into our thumb drive. And we're going to put that under the themes folder. So there we go, guys. We now have themes, or at least a theme. And we have ISOs going, and we have persistent files going. So we're going to let that all copy. And once that's done, we'll be back. All right, guys. Now that we have everything copied, let's go into our persistence folder. And we have our two persistent dat files like we were talking about earlier we're going to go ahead and rename these so the casper file is going to map to our linux mint iso so let's rename this guy mint underscore persistence and then our persistence dat file is going to map to our cali iso so we'll name this cali Persistence. You can name it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. As long as you map it with that file name, you'll be fine. All right. So as you see, excuse me, as you see, we have our ISOs copied. We have our persistence files copied and renamed. We have one theme in there. And we have our Ventoy folder. So next thing we need to do, guys, is we need to map the persistence and map the themes. And that will create our Ventoy configuration JSON file. So let's go ahead and run our PlugSon, which is part of the Ventoy uh, folder that we extracted. So if you just right click on your shortcut on your desktop for Ventoy, 
um, to disk and say open file location or you can just open the file location where you extracted this to either way that'll get you to the Ventoy folder and here we see Ventoy plugs on so go ahead and run that and once that comes up it'll take a second here there we go you'll have this little dialog box here and make sure you have the right flash drive selected H is the one we're working with I believe yes it is so we'll go back and confirm we're on H and then we'll hit start that'll open up a browser uh, tab for the Plugson app select English or if you're using Chinese use that and then we're going to be working with there's a lot of things here to, on the left side we're going to be working with the persistence and the theme today so we can do the theme first what you want to do if you do dip you can do different ones for legacy and Eufy but for this demonstration we're just going to do the main theme so you're going to click on add and then you need to find that theme.txt file so let's jump into our H and themes and we did one which is brain brainwash dead sec and then we're looking for the theme.txt which is here so we can copy this path pop that in there and say theme.txt now if you want to do multiple themes you would just uh, rinse and repeat this process so if you add another one you can just add another theme and you'd be off to the races there Right. This is barking about something here. Let's go. It may just be waiting for a save, so hold on. Yeah, okay. So let's do our persistence before we stop the plug on. So I went over to the uh, persistence plugin tab and we're going to map the ISOs to the DAT files. So hit add, and the first thing you're going to do is find the file path for the ISO. So we already know it's going to be um, H, ISOs, sorry guys, i got too many tabs open here. So H, ISO, whatever your USB drive letter is, obviously. And then the first one we'll do is the Kali ISO. So H, ISO, and then the name of that ISO. And then we need our DAT file here. So that's going to be H, persistence. And then whatever we name that DAT file, I think we called it Kali underscore persistence dot DAT. If it doesn't exist, you'll get an error, so you'll know if this is right right away. Okay, that looks good. We're going to add the other one for our Linux Mint. It'll retain that file path for you, so we just need to grab the ISO name. And then this one would have been mint underscore persistence dot dat. There you go. So we have mapped the persistence dat files to the ISOs and we have mapped the theme.txt file to the theme. So now what you want to do here guys, you want to come back here and say stop. And it's just going to say this will close the browser after you're done. So you can hit exit and the browser window will time out. And then if we come back in here, we should be able to go to the Ventoy folder and see a Ventoy.json file. We can open that with notepad or any text editor. And we should see some JSON configuration in there now. So we see the theme files there, and then we see the persistence has a, a block of JSON in there for persistence where we've mapped things. So that looks good. Now we can go ahead and test this out. And we'll see if our theme stuck, and we'll also see if our persistence is working. So let me go ahead and eject this, and we will head over to the laptop to take a look. All right, let's jump over to the laptop.
All right, so I've got the USB in the laptop. Let's go ahead and boot to it. Let's go ahead and boot Ufi. All right, looks like our theme worked, guys. That's cool. And I do see we have two ISOs here. So, so good so far. Let's uh, try to launch Linux Mint. We'll see if we can't validate persistence functionality. So we'll boot that in normal mode, and we will boot with persistence. And then we'll give this a second to load up here. All right, guys, so it looks like we have Linux Mint. Let me see if I can duplicate the screen here. It's actually extending it from the laptop to the USB. I have a USB HDMI adapter. So that should allow us to mirror the screen. All right, so now that we're in here, let's um, do a couple things. Let's create a file. We'll just call it test. And if we reboot and that's still there, that's a sign that persistence is obviously working. Another thing we can do is run a df space dot dash h and there we see that we do have a 3.8 gigabyte file system that is available for us to write to so those are good signs because we did carve out four gigs of persistence here so let's go ahead and reboot and let's boot into Linux Mint again and see if our persistence is working Look at that. Not only do we still have the file here, but it also retained the settings that we set for the display to mirror. Uh, out of the box it was extending the desktop, so this was a secondary display. Uh, so it, it retained those settings and it retained the test file. So I would say this is confirmed working. Persistence is intact for Linux Mint and it's working. So let's go ahead and reboot here and we will test the Kali Linux persistence next. And we're going to pick Linux, I'm sorry, we're going to pick Kali Linux this time. Now when you boot Kali, you have to make sure you pick the, uh, not only here, the persistence, but then on the boot menu, you need to go down to persistence as well. So live system with USB persistence. Make sure you select that option. Okay, so I have the screen mirrored here. Resolution is a little funky. Let's see if we can fix that. might be as good as it'll give for the demonstration but that's fine we just want to test persistence here guys so let's create a file let's call it test and let's run our df-h And it says we have a 4 gig or 3.8 gig overlay. But let's see if persistence works. I had issues with this when I did it the first time. I had to actually create manually a DAT file. So if we have that issue, I'm going to show you guys how to do that as well. So let's go ahead and reboot Kali and see if the file's still there. And it actually did work, guys, so that's good. <clears throat> I had an issue with it on mine. Uh, it may have been something that I did wrong, but I went ahead and created a 
a manual one that works. So if you guys do run into that issue where persistence is not working using that stock persistence.dat file, I will show you how to do it anyway, even though it worked for us here. I'm also going to show you the command you need if you choose to extend these persistent dat files later so that you have a larger amount of space to store to. Um, just know that you should be using the ext4 flavor of these dat files so that you can easily shrink and expand them uh, non-destructively. So let's go ahead and head back to the PC now and I'm going to show you those commands and then I'm also going to show you after that the final product that you should now have all the tools to construct yourself. So let's head back to the PC. Alright guys, so for this next step uh, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need to download the shell scripts from the persistence file here, or from the persistence site I should say page. So you're going to need the create persistence.shell file and you're going to need the extend persistence image.shell file. I've already downloaded these so you guys go ahead and download them. And then the other thing you're going to need is WSL or a Linux box. If you have WSL you can do it right on your Windows machine. If you don't know about WSL, it's Windows Subsystem for Linux, so it allows you to run Linux directly inside of a Windows operating system. I have a video that I'll link here for WSL, how to configure it, how to use it, how to get you up and going with that. Very useful tool if you don't have it. Okay, so if you do have it, you're going to launch the terminal. Go ahead and run that as admin. And then if you have it, you can uh, go to the next tab, drop down, and you can pick one of your Linux flavors from WSL. I'll use Ubuntu here. And then another cool thing that you can do when you have WSL running is you can have a share, or it's built-in share for WSL. So if you just whack whack WSL dollar, that'll get you into your different distributions that you've installed. So Ubuntu in our case, uh, the default directory is going to be home and then your username that you've created. So what I do is I just copy in those files here, like the dat file I want to extend or the different shell scripts, so the extend and the create shell scripts, and then we can run those directly from here. So I will give you guys the, uh, the commands, but they're also on the site. So let's say we wanted to create our own dat file if we were having some issues like let's say we were having some issues with the um, file that was included for Kali like I was you would want to run the following so sudo shell or sh and then run the call to create persistence the image dot shell file and then dash s for the size so we're going to make it 8 gigs this is in megabytes and then dash l because it does require a label of persistence and then you're going to do dash T for the type, which would be the ext4 file system. So if you run that, you give it the sudo password, it'll go on to create the uh, 8 gigabyte persistence dat file. So there you go. You've got a, a new file here for persistence. And then it, let's say that you needed to extend something later on. You could call the extend persistence. You know what? Before I do that, one more thing: when you, if you're making one for Cali, you need it. You do need to make sure uh, that the configuration file has the following in it. So you're going to have to run an echo, and then in parentheses forward slash space union and then if you pipe that out and do a sudo t that'll overcome any permission issues uh, but you're gonna have to mount it first actually so let me take a step back here so now that we've created that persistence.dat file you would mount it There you go, you would mount it, and then you would echo that out, 
There you go. All right, guys. So the last thing I want to show you in the Ventoy Plugson is actually the password plugin. So this is how you can password protect your USB. So since we have a persistent or multiple persistent images, that means we probably will be saving files and information to those operating systems. So there's obviously potential to have sensitive data on there or stuff that you don't want people to get a hold of. So this is just adding a layer of protection. Should, should someone get a hold of this USB, um, they would have to know the password to get in or they would have to know how to configure Ventoy. So not a lot of people know how to configure Ventoy like this. So again, just another layer of protection. So you probably only really need to do the boot password. So if you just come in here or the menu password, that's fine as well. But the boot password is, you know, they have to have a password just to even boot Ventoy. So if we edit that guy, I would say do salt MD5. That's going to be your best option here. And then you can just put in a password. Unicorn, let's do IT Unicorn 2024. And if we hit OK, and then if we stop our Ventoy plugs on, yes, exit, OK. And if we come into our H drive again, we should see a salted password entry for our password. So we have a boot PWD, so a boot password, and then it's an MD5, and here's our salt, and then this will be our hash. So when you go to boot that, you just saw it when I booted my final product there, uh, you had to put in a password. So that's what it looks like. You can't get in without a password. This is obviously optional, so use it if you want and you can do further layers. You probably saw in there, there was like per ISO, you can do a password. So if you only wanted to protect certain ISOs, stuff like that, you have the flexibility and the granularity to do so. All right, guys, hope that's helpful. All right, guys, so you should now have all the tools and all the knowledge that you need to create your very own ultimate persistent USB. And it should look something like this or customized to your liking. There you have it guys, 10 operating systems, 10 persistent images, and if you hit F5 here, you can get into tools, and we can switch themes, because there's 10 themes as well. So if you want to try a different theme, just scroll through, pick a theme, hit enter, and it'll switch themes on the fly for you. There you have it guys. Find your favorite theme. You can go back to the JSON configuration through the plug on and you can make that the default if you choose to do so. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys build your own persistent USB or if you don't want to go through the trouble, it's quite a bit of work. Um, it'll take some time to download and get everything configured. If you'd rather go over to my shop and pick one up, hey I very much appreciate the support as well. If you use the code ITUnicorn2024, you're going to save yourself 20% on this brand new USB for a limited time. That offer is going to be good through the end of January of 2024. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I wish everyone the best success um, in all facets, health, finance, everything for 2024. All right, guys, I'm going to have a lot more content coming this next year, so I hope everyone stays tuned. If you haven't done so already, Consider subscribing to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.